Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Keeper Eric here. Miller Park Zoo. We're at the eagle exhibit today. So we'll be talking about our American bald eagles, Beauty and Mathada. So we'll give a couple people, people a couple more seconds to join. I brought rats, which is their favorite food. We're gonna feed them. You'll be able to watch them eat. Uh, they are predators. They do like to eat um, prey. Rats are their favorite. We also give them fish and a little bit of uh, the horse meat mixture for birds of prey. So let me go ahead and toss these out so she'll be quiet. <laughs> okay, hopefully she will go down and eat that. Right now what they're doing is they're calling. Uh, this is a territorial call, which bald eagles do. And right now, uh, Keeper Grace and I are invading their territory. This exhibit is their territory. And they don't like it. So instead of just uh, being able to get over it, they want us um, to get out. And they've been here since 1996, so they're definitely um, it's been a long time since they've been the new kid in town, but it's still their territory and they still haven't gotten used to the fact that we are here and we're going to be bringing them food all the time. So they're going to yell. Uh, Beauty is the female. You're looking at her right now. And Mathada is the male. He's over by the pond. And Beauty's bigger. The females of this species are bigger than the males. And that's so they can hunt the same territory without exhausting all of the same uh, size prey. So the females can eat a little bit bigger things, the males can eat smaller things, and they're not going to eat all of, um, they're not going to exhaust all of the same size um, together. They can, they can take a little bit of each. Females uh, are generally bigger because they have uh, to do more of the work, they've got to produce the eggs. Uh-oh, look out. You don't want to become a victim of love there. Um, so they've got to do the work in producing the eggs. It takes a lot of hard work from the body to do that. And so the females are generally bigger because they have to do that. It's just harder work. And the males don't have to go through all of that energy, so they can be a lot smaller. Uh, both of these eagles were injured in the wild in Alaska. Uh, when they were really quite young, they were maybe a year or so old. Um, we don't really know because they were found in the wild. They were both um, immature, which means their heads hadn't turned white yet. They, bald eagles are, their whole bodies are kind of brownish like this when they are uh, first hatch out. Well, when they first hatch out, they're kind of gray and fuzzy, but then when they start to mature, their whole bodies are gray and then when they get to about two years or so of age, the heads turn white. Um, so out in the wild, eagles will, will live life in the fast lane um, quite a bit. But here at the zoo, uh, they can kind of take it easy. It's more of a peaceful, easy feeling. Um, you can see that um, they can't fly. We don't have a top on this exhibit. There's just a a wall and a fence and they, they can't get over it. Um, that's each of their wings were injured. So Beauty's right wing was injured. You see it's kind of drooping down a little bit. And Mathada's left wing was injured. And when that happens, they uh, can't fly anymore. And when they can't fly, they can't catch any prey. Um, so they have to come live at a zoo or they're gonna, they're gonna die. Um, and then a lot of times when that, those wings are injured, the muscle can't hold it up to the body anymore. And so it kind of droops down. And then when that happens, they're always dragging their wing on the ground and they open up these sores that never heal. And even now you'll sometimes see them um, bust the tip of their wing open. But when it's dragging on the ground, it really gets bad. So each of them has part of their wing amputated even. And that's not something we would do normally to a bird of prey. Uh, it's just something that 
Um, it's kind of a byproduct of them getting hurt. Um, do you want me to start asking questions? Um, let me say, we'll talk about, um, so this time of year, they, they're just getting done with nesting. So every year the female lays an egg and, or two or three, depending, and she would sit on those. Uh, here um, at the zoo in the city, we don't want her hatching anything out. Um, usually eagles breed in the air, which neither of these two can do, obviously. But we want to make sure that whatever eggs she would lay, she um, wouldn't hatch. So we pull them right away and replace them with dummy eggs. Um, otherwise, she would keep laying eggs every time we pulled them, and that's really hard on her body. So she does sit on the nest, usually from uh, end of March, beginning of April, through whenever we pull the eggs in end of April, typically. So we'll let her sit on them for a couple weeks until she gets over that need to lay and then we'll pull them because while she's sitting on the nest she's quite a witchy woman <laughs> and it's very dangerous to to um, get over in that nest you've got to kind of sneak in like a like a desperado and get that egg out so uh, luckily nesting season is over and she's up and moving around and the male's up and moving around usually one of the two of them's always on that nest and um, now unfortunately starts molting season, which means they're gonna start losing their feathers. And if you ever come in the summer, despite our hard work, a lot of times you'll see white down feathers everywhere. Oh, you wanna trade me? No, oh, there's one on this branch right here. Yep. Yep, they'll lose that their- That is everywhere. Their flight feathers, but these down feathers just come you up everywhere. You can see over there in the, their and we little try, nesting spot. Looks like snow over yeah, there. Yeah, we try real hard to get it all cleaned up, but it's really, really hard sometimes they get everywhere it's like confetti sometimes yeah. <laughs> all right we have some questions yeah well you kind of answered mary best question okay. she asked um have these guys ever has has this pair ever had any chicks no and like i said i'll explain why we never let them have any chicks um because at one point eagles were an endangered species um back in like the early 70s especially there were very few nesting pairs down here in the lower 48 and so they were um, any ones that were in captivity, they were breeding and sometimes releasing the, the young into the wild. But luckily, they've, the population has recovered to the point where they are not endangered anymore. They're not threatened. They're very common. You'll see them around um, town here in Bloomington in the city. Um, and so what we don't want to do is breed birds that we have to release into the wild. Uh, there are so many that live in the wild that are injured that come and live in zoos like our two that there's no space for ones that were that we've bred and so if we did breed them we would have to train the babies to live in the wild and it's just a long involved process so it's better to not worry about it we wouldn't want those babies to get used to us people giving them food right it's, they wouldn't know how to hunt it's in the it's, wild yeah you've got to you can hack them and train them to live in the wild but it's just a long expensive process Right. And there's so many injured ones that, that need our that help. That need a home. Yeah. That live in zoos. So that kind of answered my mom's question. Well, she, she asked, um, are any of the eggs that they lay fertilized? You know, we don't let them get far enough to even find out, really. We, yeah, we pull we, them before they start we developing. We pull them pretty quick because we, I don't mind pulling an egg that's been fertilized for a day or two that may not even really be incubated hardly. But if we let it sit a week or two and it starts developing, then I would feel kind of bad pulling that. Um, and like I said, eagles typically breed in the air. They will kind of lock up while they're flying and kind of just flop around in the air while they're breeding. And ours don't leave the ground at all. They're, they're stuck they on can't, the ground, yeah. So. Um, Danielle, age five, would like to know what type of food we feed them. We feed okay. them. That goes along with my mom's question too. How often do we feed them? Right. Uh, we feed them six days a week. Um, it's common for birds of prey and some of the other predators like um, cats and things like that to do a fast day uh, where you just don't feed them and kind of let their bodies clear out. If they've got something to um, pass through or cast up, that's a good time for their body to do that. Um, 
And so we do a fast day. And then the other days they get fish, which they would normally be eating a lot of in the wild. Here at the zoo, it's not their favorite thing. And we have diva eagles here. Yeah. So fish, rats, we, they get twice a week. They love rats, uh, despite the fact that they're not eating anything. The, right they'll probably eat them as soon as we leave. <laughs> yeah, we might try to back out here in a minute or two and um, chase them back towards the back where the I might move the, the rats around a little bit. And then the other day they get a, a bird of prey horse meat mixture. So it's very similar to what the uh, tiger and the snow leopards get, except it's made for birds of prey. Um, birds of prey, like owls and eagles, uh, owls especially need to cast up pellets. Uh, usually they do that when they're eating whole prey like um, chicks and mice, all the fur and bones and feathers. Um, will sit in their stomach and they'll cast it up and so the bird of prey has like corn and seeds and a couple other things to make sure that they're casting that up um we've had a couple questions um when we pull the, their eggs do we feed them to any of the other animals here at the zoo no we do not um the eagles are still a protected species even though they are not endangered there's a, an act that's literally called the bald and golden eagle act that gives them special protections. So if you want to shoot one, that's a good way to get a fine and possibly some prison Jail time. Jail time, yeah. Um, you're not allowed to own feathers. You're not allowed to own body parts. Um, and then the eggs would go along with that. So we just make sure we destroy them so there's no um, right. No way that anything... Here's what, and what, what do we do with all of the feathers that we collect right. too? So in Colorado, there's a repository um, that fish and wildlife holds and everything that's seized that's not alive ends up there. So if somebody's smuggling in tiger wine or um, a purse made out of an endangered species or something like that, it all ends up in this repository in Colorado. But then they also take all of the eagle feathers throughout the country and we send them there and then Native American tribes can request those feathers for use in their ceremonial uses, their, um, their wear and their um, other ceremonies. So, she's gonna scream. So that's where we send them. And I like to think that some of ours end up um, being used yeah. by the Native By Americans. the Native Americans, that'd be cool. Um, Jackson, age seven, says he missed um, how long we've had this pair. How old are these eagles? We've had these two since 1996. So they are the longest tenured residents of the zoo. They've been here the longest. Um, How long have we had the ball pythons? Oh, they're, they're they, old five. Yeah, so the ball pythons are older, but they haven't been here longer. I no. could be incorrect, but I think... I think you're right. Um, these, these birds are fairly long-lived. They'll get to 50, 60 years In old. In captivity, yeah. Um, so they're still fairly young there. And then they were both um, really young when they came. They were both like two or three years old. So we're looking at birds that could be here. Let's see, it's, what year is it, 2020? They've been here 20, almost 25 years. They could right. be here another 25 years or longer. Right. So hopefully- Hopefully they're still here by the time I retire. <laughs> so who's that, Jackson? Is that who asked that? Yeah, question? Jackson asked So that. Jackson, hopefully when you're grown and you have kids, you'll be able yeah. to bring them here and show them beauty and Mathata. Right. <laughs> um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Jackson would also like to know if they've ever tried to climb the fence. They have not. They um, they probably, if they got a running start and flapped enough, they could probably hop, not the fence, but that wall up front. Yeah. That wall is only about three and a half feet higher. So I've never seen them do it. But even when we have to chase them around to catch them, uh, to give them their vaccines every year, we've I've never seen one try to jump it. So luckily, no, they don't try to. Um, but we try not to put them in a position where they might want to or feel that they need to. Um, Danielle, age five, would like to know how much each of them weigh. Oh, that's a great question. We, we, did, just, we did weigh them a couple weeks we ago. We weighed one of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she got a little sassy. They, if I remember right, they're about seven kilograms. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So maybe 10 pounds if that yeah 12 pounds and again the female is going to be larger than the male right 
so she might be a little bit more. So when you look at them, you think, God, that's probably a 25 pound bird, um, but they're not really heavy. There's, there's a lot of feathers on there. Anytime you see a bird, remember that there's way more feathers than you think there are. And when you <laughs> pluck a bird, they get a lot smaller. Um, right. And then birds also have hollow bones because um, it's easier to fly. They don't weigh as much. And then they also have air sacs throughout their body, again, to um, loosen, to lighten them up. So when they're flying, they're not as heavy. Um, Nora, age eight, would like to know what kind of enrichment we give them. That's a great question. These guys, I have the worst time trying to give them enrichment. It's, I think it's the same with like my turkey vulture. Like, unless I use her, put her food in enrichment, she's not too excited about it. Right, and even when I use their food, like sometimes every once in a while we'll put their food in a bag and they'll they'll rip the bag open and pull it out. Yeah, the turkey vulture but likes to do that too. There's times I put their food in a bag and it's there the next day. <laughs> um, I tried. Um, we had a special guest come who wanted feeding, and so the guest helped me tie the rat to a um, piece of string, and then we hung the rat, thinking it'd be a little bit like a pinata or something. And the eagles were terrified of it. <laughs> so. The eagles and birds of prey in general are not very smart um, a parrot you could do a lot of enrichment for and they're going to figure it out and they're going to destroy stuff eagles and I think they're owls, very simplistic yes um, if you look at their head if you pulled all those feathers and you saw how big their eyes were in relation to their skull you'd realize there's not much of a brain there so I've seen eagles tear apart uh, heads of lettuce and things like that, mm -hmm. but every time I've given ours lettuce, it just sits there. So, unfortunately, they're, if, if you think of something you want me to try, let me know. But <laughs> <laughs> they've been my one of my bigger failures in Ridgemont wise. Uh, let's see. Oh, Shana, age 12, would like to know their names again. Beauty is the female on and that's, your left, yep. and, and Mathada, Mathada is, the male. is the male on the right. And I believe they came with those names, and I don't know, I don't know what Mathata means exactly. Uh, I think that's all the questions so far. If you've got any more, shout them out. I do know I, we haven't touched ba touch base on uh, my favorite bald eagle fact. Yes. We've we've heard we've heard uh, Beauty call a couple times, um, but I think my favorite fun fact about bald eagles is that in in movies a lot. You see, like, the big, beautiful, scenic scene in movies with the bald eagle flying over the, the scenery. And then they have this big, majestic call. And that is not a bald eagle call. <laughs> You've heard beauty. That's that, like, chirping noise. That's the sound that bald eagles make. Um, they often use a red-tailed hawk call in movies like that. Right. They think it sounds more majestic. It does sound more majestic. It does sound more majestic. <laughs> Uh, if you re remember your history, Ben Franklin wanted the uh, wild turkey to be our national bird and was overruled and they chose the bald eagle. Um, and I think it's kind of the perfect symbol for America. It looks good, it's very proud, but there's just not a lot going on there. There's... Oh, Mike says Mathada. He was told when he was a JZK that Mathada means trouble. Trouble? Hmm. That's funny because he is not trouble. No, he's not trouble. <laughs> he's probably the, he's the nicer of the two. Yes. And that's kind of, uh, Nolan age eight asks, is one of them nicer than the other? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, she is definitely the witchy woman <laughs> and he, she's sassy. Like if they're sitting on the nest and I get too close, Mathada will bail. He will take off and leave the nest. He'll leave the egg and she will not, she'll stand her ground and fight you. So I, I would say she's, and then right. when we're trying to catch them, she's definitely the, the more Like I said, we got, catch. when we, we, we weighed them a couple weeks ago when we gave them their West Nile vaccine and he let us weigh them. She managed to get out of the wrap and off of the scale. Yeah. We didn't have <laughs> enough people to, <laughs> to do it properly. Um, Shana, age 12, would like to know what their wingspan is. I don't, I don't know that we have a wingspan on them because they both have wing injuries. Yeah. I can tell you in general, in general bald the eagle. wingspan of a bald eagle is like six to seven feet. Yeah. And we used to have a sign in front of the exhibit that yeah. said, what's your wingspan? That 
um, you could kind of measure yourself against. Unfortunately, that sign rotted away and we built another one and that one rotted away and we just haven't been able to. We have a, yeah. Every time we make one, it just falls apart. So um, but I'd say six to seven feet is probably yeah, what you're Yeah, that's looking average at. of an adult bald eagle. Um, Joe, age seven, would like to know if they've ever caught um, anything wild in their exhibit, like a chipmunk. <laughs> No, a lot of our animals do. The otters do, the palace cats do. Um, who else catches wild stuff all the time? The leopards, the leopards, the leopards have. have caught stuff. Yeah. Um, literally, there are rabbits that live in here and they're not afraid at all. I think when you're looking at a bald eagle or most of the birds of prey, they are built for aerial attacks. They come down, they swoop, they grab the animal with their talons and they take off. Yeah. And without that, they're just not real graceful on the, the grass, on the ground. No, I think they catch stuff in the air or they fish. They're pretty good fishermen. Yeah. So these two birds, if they were flighted, could definitely fly faster than we could run. But on the ground, we can really overtake them. They're not fast enough to on the ground to outrun yeah. us. That's probably one of the coolest things. I was in northern Minnesota and I was on a hike and we came on this overlook and over a lake and we saw two adults teaching two or three immature bald eagles how to fish. It was very, it was very cool. cool. Um, do, 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 Nora, age eight, do they ever get to go on walks around the zoo? No, we um, have never glove trained these two. Uh, it's just never been something we've been interested in doing. Um, some I of think our she other... would be too high strung. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but... know that she would make a good glove bird. Right. Um, and there are people that have uh, glove trained birds. There are people that will fly birds. Um, there's, and I think it's a rehab center in some place and they, they've trained their bird to fly and they'll bring it to stadiums mm -hmm. and fly it around the stadium before a yeah, game Yeah, I think, um, oh, the NFL Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. They have a trained eagle. Um, we do not, uh, we do train our red tail hawks and we, uh, we'll take her out for education programs yeah. or for, um, to show guests or for zoo do. And it might be kind of harder with these guys, um, uh, because of the wing injury. I know like I'm trying to glove train the, the turkey vulture and she has a wing amputation as well. And because she has balance issues because she doesn't have that wing, um, she's very, unsure of herself balancing on the glove right and these guys are they're, they're definitely not impossible to train but they are very strong and they can be very dangerous and well that kind of works with my mom's question what kind of protection <laughs> do you wear when you work with them when with these two in particular we don't try to grab them at all without some really thick heavy leather gloves yeah um, not the, not like gardening gloves these are gloves specifically made for handling like yeah um, they're often called animals. like bite gloves yeah right and even then i've seen their talons go right into a bite glove mm -hmm. um, and their talons will lock down yep um, it hurts we, usually <laughs> usually once you get um their heads covered they relax yeah so we do have um hoods we can put on them which is typically how you start training a bird of prey to like for falconry purposes um so if we're trying to catch them usually we uh, we get them cornered and we'll throw a blanket over them and then once they can't see they relax but um, their mouths are very dangerous they're sharp they're built for tearing flesh but those talons um are built for grabbing put like digging into something and holding on and locking down Right. And so you don't want to be. Yeah. You the don't talons are more dangerous than the end of that beak. Uh, once they go in, you got to wait for them to let go. You can't pry them apart. So that's uh, what else do we. We have a little wrap. We can like a little papoose type thing that we can put around them when we're trying to weigh them or do an exam because their wings can whack you too. So if you get whacked with a wing and you're, you let go, then, then you're able to get footed. Sorry, I was reading longer comments. Um, okay. Jennifer, um, Jennifer said that she visits these beauties all the time. One more time, the names. Oops, what are their names? One more time. Beauty and Mathata. Beauty's the female. Beauty's the one, the one flapping her wings. Yep. And then Mathata is the, the male. 
All right, if you wanna Are you ready to do this? That. Okay. This is our... Hold on, let me zoom it. Zoom out and out of the tree. <laughs> this is our mystery animal painting that we are giving away this week to somebody who donates. All you gotta do is put your uh, donate to the through the donate button here on Facebook. Use your real name. Don't donate anonymously, or we don't know who you are. And then on Sunday morning next week, we will draw the name of one of our don donating donators. <laughs> donators, I think. Donies, donies. I like uh, that word. <laughs> and one of you will win this painting. And on Sunday, we'll announce what animal it is too. Yeah. It'll be a surprise. It's a mystery. But it has been in a live already. Yep, it's one of our one of our previous live chat animals. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys for watching. We'll be back. Uh, Grace will be talking about the Langers tomorrow, weather permitting. And <laughs> we can do it inside, I guess, but yeah, they're cooler you guys outside. In and donating, and we'll see you soon.